Thank you, Rina. Um, I have to start off by saying um, this talk is, um, it gave me a few nightmares, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I woke up and um, I just, I dreamt of where I grew up in Croydon. And um, I searched on Google Maps and I found the actual uh, block of flats where I grew up. And I think um, for me to be here, I have to take it back to where it started. And I have to take it back to um, being brought up by a single mother. Because, you know, being a we women empowered event, I think for me, thinking big was, you know, f from when I grew up. But I think my mother really planted that in me. She was like, you know, um, well, I'll tell you where it started. It started from Croydon. I grew up in Croydon, and I'm a Sikh, and my mum and dad got divorced, and we moved from Croydon to Harrow, because um, my mum thought Harrow was better than Croydon, um, which it is, unless anyone's from Croydon. Um, but no, I mean, like, in, in, in a sense, I'm, you know, from the age of four, I started to learn Indian classical music, and I think my mum knew, you know, this is what I want to do. And I've always had one path, which is, I don't say I want to be the best, I said I want to be one of the most respected um, producers in the world. Um, and learning Indian classical music and then moving to, moving to Harrow, um, I, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. So from the age of 11, 12 years old, I was listening to people like, and I'll come back to this, I was listening to people like um, Bali Sabu, Apache Indian, uh, Ardi Berman, Teddy Riley, you know, uh, these are the people that really have inf influenced me. Apart from Ardi Berman, I would say all three of them I've crossed paths with or going to be working with and, and have worked with. Um, and it just, um, you know, it, it, kind of, it kind of makes me feel that for, for me, it was, it was drilled in my mind that if this is what you want to do, this is what you have to do. Um, and I had a woman behind me. I didn't have a father. So, you know, and I have two amazing women now. I have my wife and I have my mum, so... Um, it's always drilled in me anyway, you know, to this day. So, um, you know, so my mum was like, you do what you need to do. You know, she will look after everything. You know, I grew up in council flats um, until the age of 26, you know, and I said, okay, fine, this is what I'm going to do. So there was a record out in, um, when I was 12 years old called Ajare Aja by Pankaj and the Jets Orchestra. I think Drew, wherever he is, he'll know this tune. Oh, yes, Yes, you do. Um, so this was the only kind of, because um, it, it, it's kind of based on every Sunday I wanted to go to Southall. I wanted to go to ABC Music. I wanted to see what is out there. You know, this is where, for me, um, you know, all I wanted to do was kind of copy Sohotas and Apache Indian and Valley Sugu and all these people. And I was like, this is amazing. And Network East and Saturday mornings I used to get up and say, this is what I want to watch. So, you know, Saturday mornings used to go, Sunday, um, sorry, Sundays used to go to ABC, and I picked up this vinyl, and I saw the address was in Harrow, so I, I composed a little demo from the age of 12, and I walked to the, uh, to the Bunkage studio in Harrow, and I gave him my cassette, and then the next day he called me, because I love what you're doing, this fusion, and this fusion really comes from my mum being in Africa, and listening to Elvis Presley, and James Brown and Stevie Wonder, as well as our, you know, R.D. Berman. So, you know, it, you got to remember, it's just been my mum, no brothers, no sisters. So, mum was like, I love Indian music, but I love Elvis and love James Brown. So, all this is going in my mind. I'm like, okay, this is great. You know, this is, you know, what is this? You know, and I said, this is what I love. I love this and I love this, and I want to put it together, and I want to be one of the first people to do that, but do it in a way where. You know, I can enjoy it as well. So I got my first record deal with Bunkage when I was 14 years old. And, you know, the next week I was flying to India and stuff like that, recording with all these singers. I didn't know what I was doing, to be honest. I was just like, okay, cool. You know, I just have to do what I have to do. So, um, but at the same time, you know, I was learning music. You know, I think learning music was very important to me. So coming back and, um, you know, I did albums, Hindi remixes. And it was still, there was something about, like, working... In, in the UK, but kind of, there was not really, and I won't say out south or Birmingham, but there was no progression in music. And then suddenly Apache Indian Bali Sabu, you know. Um, you know, obviously before that we had people like Bidu who did Kung Fu Fighting and, you know, and he did Star and stuff like that. But for a youth person, for a young British Asian to look up to, I mean, I still say to Apache now, 
why didn't you and Bali Sugu work together ever? You know, but they didn't. But you know, so funny enough, Apache Indian signed me when I was 18, um, which was a, a dream come true for me. You know, it was amazing, and I worked with Apache for a little while. And I, I always say to people that want to get into the music industry that you have to take, you have to take the rough. You have to take people ripping you off and bad management and not getting paid royalties and this is something I'll come to in a, in a bit because this is what I learned, you know, and um, working with Apache, he, he really taught me a lot of stuff and, and then from Apache I moved on to Bali Sagu, you know, I got signed by that. So I was ticking these boxes on like, when I was 11 I used to work with, you know, listen to these people and I was like, this is amazing. And still remember at this time I wasn't earning any money, you know, um, as a lot of people know, people wanted to do free things in the Asian music industry. And, um, but for me, it was, a, it, was, it was a case of like, I wasn't even in my 20s, and this was the experience for me. Um, so then after, when I got signed to Bali Sugu, I, I, I kind of realized that what I really want to do is I want to, um, because I don't like to be in the line. The more I try and stay in the back, the more I get pushed in the front. You know, I, I, I've always tried to build a brand name which is, you know, which is about the music and, and I always wanted to push artists forward. So I set this challenge that I'm going to go and find um, a Punjabi artist and a R&B artist and put them together um, and see what happens. And, you know, and when I found Jay and when I found Juggy, we were just in the studio and we worked on a song. And, and I'm going to say it how it is and people, you might think, oh yeah, okay. But it was literally, we worked on a song together our management at the time were like, this is great, you know, let's just put it out there. <clears throat> put it out there, next minute Virgin Records knocking on our door saying, you know, the attention that it's got on Asian um, radio and, and PR, we want to sign, we want to sign the record. Sign the record, next minute it was, we were doing HMV tours, and next minute it was number 12 in, in the UK charts, and top of the pops, and I was just like, wow, this is... I mean, I'm trying to rush this because it's, there's so much, but it, I'm just talking on, 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 on a way where, in my mind, it was always about, you know, all I wanted to do was kind of bring my sound forward um, and bring artists forward that can be represented and represent the British Asian music scene in a, in, you know, in a way where no one else can. And I think, you know, I le I've learned so much in the music industry and... You know, and it's so, I'm so honoured actually to speak here because it's, uh, it, I don't do much public speaking, but I think when I do, I just really talk from the heart. You know, I'm not reading from this iPad, it's blank. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it is really just a case of, um, you know, it, it's, it's a journey. And I always believe that you have to go through this journey. You know, I, I really nurtured my craft and I'm still doing it. You know, I'm still... I'm still doing it. I mean, it didn't stop there. Obviously, Jay went to America and he had, you know, the first, let alone British, I think, British Asian, but one of the first British people to have a number one. Um, but then, you know, I've had like seven managements, seven managers. Most of them have been great, but some of them have been like terrible. And even to this day, talking to my lawyer yesterday, knowing that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't business minded before. And that, I think that for me was, you know, you know, a thing where um, no one really taught me that. You know, I no, no one taught me that you have to look after your publishing, you have to look after your royalties, you have to look after... All my thing was actually think big, I just want to do this. And um, so passionate about it and um, started, you know, started my own record company. Um, but I will go back to the story actually, because I did have it in my mind, was when I formed with uh, Jay, Sean and Juggy D, we, 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 we got in a car and we drove around Hounslow and Southall, and literally shouting out the streets, buy a record, buy a record, dance with <laughs> It's coming out um, 8th of September. And, you know, we used to fly past in Trinity Centre in, in Hounslow and go to, you know, um, the Broadway in Southall. And, and, you know, and things like that really kind of, um, really kind of made me feel that, you know, there was so much graft to it. You know, there was so much graft to kind of what we wanted to do because, you know, I was with individuals who had the same kind of, um, the same kind of belief and the same kind of uh, drive as me, you know, uh, which, which was like, it's not just going to stop, like, okay, it didn't stop at Top of the Pops, it was like, okay, fine, let's get another Top of the Pops, let's get another hit, number six, with Eyes of You, actually, it's not going to stop there, 
You know, we haven't got a number one yet, we're jaded in America, but we're like, let's get another one, and number four. Um, and it, it, it kind of just makes me feel that, you know, and going back to where it started, it started from my mother. You know, it's, that's where it's really started from. It started from a woman saying to me, don't worry about anything, you know, living with my mum until I was 26, not getting paid anything from the music industry. But for someone like her to say, you do what you need to do. I didn't study. I didn't, you know, I went to, I went to school, but the teachers liked me a lot. So they were like, just go in the music room and do what you need to do, you know. Um, and, it, and, and I really believe that, you know, it's from a single parent family, um, for a mother to, it, I, you know, it goes back to mum saying to me, I'm going to think big. I know what you can do because she saw it when, you know, when I was four or five years old. So, it, it, you know, even now it's kind of like I'm still on this journey. I'm still on some sort of journey and I, I, I'm kind of like going back to the beginning now. Um, I've been headhunted by Teddy Riley, so I'm going to America to work on some projects with him. Um, and I guess that, you know, this is, the journey now starts for me because this is all I've ever wanted to do was kind of just represent, um, you know, British Asians around the world. And, and really kind of just focus on, on progressing my sound, progressing my culture, you know, being Punjabi, just, you know, just progressing everything I do, but fusing it with music that I love. And the reason why I came up with this situation was, was you know, we used to go to, like, clubs in, in London, you know, I know Tasmin knows Limelight and all these people in these places. And I used to see a lot of, all the Asians dancing to R&B, and then Punjabi track would come on, and people would dance to that, and I'm like, why isn't there a track? You know, why can't we just put this, to, to, you know, this culture together? Um, not just not just R and B, but anything. You know, let's just let's not be. And I think it goes back to what you're saying: is not be scared. You know, don't be scared. Just like you said, you know, think big or go home. And, and I think it really is that. I think it is. It's the kind of thing where I've always known where I'm going to go. I've always known what I want to do. One, because I want to make sure my mum is looked after. Secondly, because I know I've got a wife to look after now. <laughs> You know, um, but I've always known that, and I've always known that I, you know, I've, I've never wanted to DJ, I've never, you know, for growing up as a teenager, my, a lot of my friends ended up, ended up in the wrong side of the law, or went on and done what they did, I just like, I want to be a music producer, and I want to be one of the respected music producers in the world, and that has been my goal from, probably, you know, from when I could think, and this is what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to do. And now going to America and working with someone like Teddy Riley, who's one of the biggest and most respected producers in the world, and who's head out with me, I guess, you know, my journey now really starts, you know, because, you know, a good thing that, a, a, a really memorable thing that he said to me, he said, I want to be the one to bring your sound to America. Because I still believe, you know, and hats off to Jay and hats off to people, but I still believe that our sound has not broke through in America. On a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a way where we don't have to, we don't have to be afraid and saying, you know what, we're going to do R&B and pop records, but we're going to put our culture in there. And I hope I'm going to be one of the people that are going to contribute to that. You know, um, I'm sure I know that. You know, this is what I, I plan to do, and this is what I want to do. So my thinking big actually starts now, and the women can relax. And, <laughs> you know, in my life, I'm saying. Um, but, you know, and um, it's great. You know, I started off with my mum, and now I've got Manu and my wife. And, you know, it's uh, having these two really inspirational, strong um, women. It's, it's, it's a great thing, you know, and it's a great thing to talk here, and it's a great thing just to talk, talk to you guys about. You know, and just be real and just talk to you where it's come from and hopefully where it's going to go. So, thank you.